Hi everyone, welcome to my dining room. As you know, school is not in for the next two weeks, and so we're still taking advantage of clay season. I have my wonderful, beautiful assistant, Ella, who is here to help us show some of the things that we can do with clay. Now, I did not send home any supplies with you for clay. That doesn't mean that you only need to work with your hands, but instead, Ella and I are going to show you some of the weird things that we might use to create your clay so clay with. So I'm gonna turn this video around and bring it down to the tablecloth so you can see what we're looking at. Here you go. All right. So there are some very normal supplies that we're going to be using. Oh, did you see that? Throw, throw, burrito. Absolutely favorite game that we have right now. Did you agree with me, Ella? Sure. Ella agrees. I like She has another one, but you know what? We might give you a game suggestion every time we came. Well, come on here, too. All right, so here is our video. Here are some of our clay supplies. All right. One of the things that you're going to notice is my hand is laying on a tablecloth. I have a vinyl valentine's day tablecloth that i got on clearance somewhere and we have it on the table so if you want to protect your table some way this might be a good idea a cookie sheet might be a good idea a little a what a plate a plastic table like a pl plastic placemat all that kind of stuff you can even do it on your table but you have to clean up afterwards, okay? Clean up afterwards. Kitchen counters. If you have a bar in your house that you want to work on at, that'd be awesome. All right. Here's our clay, okay? Ellen and I have our clay. It's still secure and in the back. So we're going to pull it out here in just a minute, but let's gather our supplies. One of the first things that you're going to need is a bowl. This is a cereal bowl that we have, and we just put a little bit of water in it. All right. Um, this is a rolling pin. This one's a little funky because it's from Pamper Chef. It's meant for making pies, so that's why it's got, but most likely you might have a rolling pin that looks more like this. This is actually a Play-Doh rolling pin, and I like that idea, but I don't know how many of you have Play-Doh. Younger brothers and sisters, uh, see if you can borrow it. So this is only for rolling your supplies out, so we're probably okay with that. If all else fails and you really just don't even have a rolling pin of any kind of style, home style pizza sauce jar will work just fine. Any kind of jar that is round and you can roll over the clay. Opened, full, no, a closed jar that's full, it doesn't matter, it can be whatever, options. Now, cutting the clay. All right, Ella, is this a plastic knife or a real knife? What do you think? Plastic, because I can bend it. That's why we know it's plastic. <laughs> I'm not going to break our knife. Um, oh, a regular butter knife would be fine, too. But I happen to have the plastic, so I kept the plastic with me. And these three tools are going to serve the pitchfork. same purpose. Not a pitchfork, but they're all going to serve the same purpose. This is the one that I would use in a classroom. It's a comb. Now, my husband has an epic beard. Mm. Fabulous beard. Would you agree, Ella? It could be longer. Okay. It could be a little bit longer right now, but he uses a beard comb. Would I want to take my husband's comb without permission? Maybe. No would be the correct answer. <laughs> no, I don't. So you need to ask before you just take someone's comb. This would work. A plastic knife, uh, a plastic fork, because I know my utensils, a real fork, which this one is, and also... A toothbrush. So some art teachers use toothbrushes during clay season is they will dip the toothbrush in the water and then they'll score the clay, which you rough it up to attach pieces. So collect some tools, pause this video, go collect some tools and then come back to us. All right. So time for clay. Ellen and I have our clay. I have uh, Aiden's because he didn't come and get it in the seventh grade. Aiden. I have your clay park. So I'm gonna take my clay out of my bag. And I'm gonna try and keep the clay, keep the bag not messed to smithereens. So one of the things I would say, 
is you can either try and shake it out, shake it up, shake it up. It's not going to work. Or put your hand in here, pull the clay out, but do not put it on the table. Take your clay back and move it out of the way. I'm going to hold my clay. I'm not going to put it on the table just yet because it is really, really sticky. And I don't want to lay it on the bag because I don't want my bag to rip. That bag, this is your new best friend in clay world. Okay, we have two best friends. Uh, but this is my best friend for clay world because at the end of my time when I'm done with my clay and I still want to use it tomorrow, I need to put it back in the bag. If I don't put it in the bag, it will start to dry out, which we don't want right now. All right, right now we have great clay. So we're going to take it and we're going to fold it in half and start smushing it. Okay, I'm using the palms of my hand as I'm smushing it. And then I'm folding it again and smushing it. I'm not using my fingers per se, like my fingertips per se, because it doesn't really work and it just gets stuck. Eric, right, Ella, what do you think? How does the clay feel to you? Um, it's feeling like cloud slime. Like what? Cloud slime. Cloud slime. I don't it's know. a little thick though. It's a little bit thicker than cloud slime. It's definitely thicker than regular slime. And what we're doing right now, I'm folding it. Soft. Yeah, it's really pretty soft. And I'm going to fold it in half and smush it. What I'm doing right now is I'm removing the bubbles from the clay. There are ways to do this too, where you push it against the table. I push it away from me and then I turn it and I push it away from me. When clay is made, clay is essentially dirt and rocks and water and the companies will scoop it up and they take it and they mix it into these big pots of containers, pots and containers, and air gets stuck into these. As the air gets stuck, it works its way into the clay. No big deal. It really is no big deal right now for air. But the problem is your clay is going to dry. And once your clay dries, I can put it in the kiln. When it goes in the kiln with an air bubble, what's going to happen, Ella? It's going to explode. Bye-bye, clay. It's all gone. It's now your project, your friend's project sitting right beside your project, your enemy's project sitting right beside yours. Everything's gone because it's exploded into a bajillion pieces in the bottom of my kiln. I now have to clean it. I'm upset with you. You're upset. Yada, yada. Let's get these bubbles out of here. So I'm wedging it and folding. So it's pretty good now. Okay. Ella and I are ready to build a little bit, and we're going to show you how to attach one piece of clay to another piece of clay. Yeah. Now, we'll show you this one right now. Do you see, if you don't, now you do, now the zoom finish, these wrinkles and stuff in my clay. So what's going on with the clay is it's starting to dry out. This right here is good. This is drying. So using my hand, I'm just going to put about two fingers in the water and I'm going to rub it on the clay to soften it up a little bit. And this is going to help right on the top of the clay where my wrinkles are now gone. All right. So I think probably the best thing for us to do to make out of clay, the simplest thing I can think of is a snowman mm -hmm. to attach two pieces together. So let's just go for it. Okay. All right. Pull off a little bit of clay. And take your three pieces and roll them into a ball. All right. What we're going to do here is we're going to attach and make a little snowman. This is just an example. Your snowman will be destroyed at the end of your lesson today. All right, no more snowman after this lesson, but for right now, here we go. Ella and I are each going to use a different method of scoring the clay 
to attach it. So Ella's going to have some water with hers. Do you want, uh, Ella, do you want the comb or the fork? Yeah. All right, Ella's going to use the comb like we would in the classroom. I'll leave the fork up here so you can see it. And then I'm going to actually work with the toothbrush. Because in case your parents are amazing and hoard toothbrushes, that would be better. Don't hoard the toilet paper. Hoard the toothbrushes. You heard it, heard it here first, people. Okay, so here's my snowman. I could easily take all three post, three pieces of my snowman and stick them together. And ta-da! Nope. My snowman looks good. He looks amazing. I will let him dry and then put him in the kiln. But as he dries, the water comes out of him and he will start to fall apart. Fall apart. Bye -bye, snowman. Bad. Nope. Now my snowman is basically little golf balls, which is not what I want. So instead, I need to score the snowman. I want this piece and this piece to stick together to become a snowman. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my toothbrush. Ella's gonna do it with the comb. And we're gonna comb the surface of the clay where you want it to, where you want it to touch the other piece of clay. All right, so with the toothbrush, you're not getting big marks, but with the comb, you're getting decent marks, decent depth. Either is fine. All right, now I'm going to get the other piece of my snowman, and I'm going to comb it. All right, so there's mine combed, and here's Ella's. All right, now the next step is with your hand, you're going to reach in your water and rub some water where you just combed it. All right. So mine actually looks pretty smooth. Ella, can you show them yours before you? So Ella's showing your hers. It actually filled on some of the cracks. It's okay. All right. So now we can put it together where the two pieces are. And I'm just going to smooth around a little bit. Knowing that I'm not going to keep this, I'm not too particular about how this, this guy looks right now. Yeah. It might look really bad, but it's you will not make one that looks this bad. You will make a more awesome snowman. Okay. But guess what? That's ready. Okay. If I wanted to, I could put, I can wait for this to dry and put it in the kiln as is. But instead, because we are awesome, our snowman needs a head. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to comb the top. So you're basically combing his, his shoulders. Essentially, think about that. I'm going to comb his shoulders. And I'm going to comb his neck. I don't need to comb the top of his head because the top of his head is not going to be... Um, attached to anything. Unless you want a hat. Unless you want a hat. And then you can comb it out and we can show you how to make a hat. So then I'm actually going to try this method. Dipping my my paint, my toothbrush in water and rub it. Oh. Aww. Hey, Ella's is awesome. My Mine. rock man. <laughs> my, my rock man. Mine is like what not to do in snowman world and Ella's is like, look how cute. So now my very rock bumpy man. little I rock man. I snowman. So yeah. All right. So to finish off our snowman, we could add a whole lot more details, but that's how you attach. So what I need to show you now before I run out of time with my video <laughs> is <laughs> when you get ready to turn it in, you will put your initials on it. But right now, here's what you need to do. Get your bag back. Call out to Aiden who forgot his clay. We're going to put our clay back into our bag. And your bags are gonna be sealed closed. I'll put my snowman beside my extra clay. All of my clay is in here. Okay. I'm gonna seal it closed so that tomorrow I can work with it some more. All right, everybody. That's the basics of clay. In our next video, I'll show you how to fix clay that's dried out and how to make uh, other items that you could work with. Love ya. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye.